Now, the governor also acknowledged yesterday's execution of a Bay County man. He signed Daryl Brian Barwick's death warrant early last month. Now, today, the Senate has answered critics who say he's only accelerating the pace of executions to show the nation he's tough on crime. Wednesday night, the state of Florida executed 56-year-old Daryl Barwick for the 1986 murder of 24-year-old Rebecca Went. Barwick brutally stabbed Went 37 times at her Springfield apartment when he was just 19 years old. He spent the next 37 years on death row before the state carried out its death sentence. Uh, he actually apologized to the victims, which a lot of these guys don't do. A lot of these guys, you know, are very uh, defiant uh, about their about their uh, atrocities. Uh, but uh, it's, it's a sad thing that has to happen. But Barwick's execution drew the usual anti-death penalty protesters to the Florida State Prison in Rayford. One of them suggested that Florida's governors have used executions for political gain. And over the years, uh, we've had uh, different uh, administrations in uh, Tallahassee who have been uh, uh, at this with uh, more gusto than others and uh, and so our current administration is um, trying to reach a kind of fever pitch here to uh, do this with even more regularity. So which governors have executed the most inmates? Well, Rick Scott sent 28 inmates to the execution chamber. Jeb Bush executed 21 inmates. Lawton Childs executed 18 people. And Bob Graham, who signed the first death warrant back in 1979, executed 16 people. They all served eight years in office. Bob Martinez sent nine people to the death chamber. And Charlie Crist executed five inmates during their four-year terms. Ron DeSantis only executed two people during his first four years. We did it when I came in, then we had a case uh, that, that got into court and then someone else claimed that they did it and this and, and, and it just took time and I was in a situation where I thought that the guy on death row was guilty but I also thought, you know, the public has to have confidence in this. So that kind of took time. Then we had like COVID and some other stuff. So it kind of, it kind of got on the, uh, uh, it, it slid a little bit because of those two factors. But DeSantis has already executed three people during the first four months of his second term. The problem is last year we didn't want to do it thinking like, oh, it's an election year and like we're trying to do that. So we said, let's just get through the election. And then so we're trying to get on a more normal pace uh, with some of this. And the backlog is large. There are 297 people currently sitting on Florida's death row. Of the nine Bay County men sentenced to death since 1976, Barrick is the only one to have been executed. Two others have died of natural causes while waiting to be executed. Charles Kenneth Foster, who arrived at Rayford in October of 1975, died in December of 2020 after 45 years on death row. And James Armando Card spent 39 years on death row before dying in April of 2021. That leaves six men still awaiting execution. Kyle Bates has been on death row for 40 years. Mark Gerald's 32 years. Roderick Orm, 30 years. Paul Everett, 20 years. Robert Bailey, 17 years. And Matthew Kaler, 13 years. But I do believe when the families, uh, the victims' families have this situation and it takes decades to get justice, that's wrong. And so... So we're doing what we can to to make sure that that the, that the justice is not denied in these cases. And so we'll, we'll continue to do that. And unfortunately, there's some really, really bad apples that are sitting on death row. And, um, you know, it's uh, it's this is the this is the law of the land. And we're going to make sure that uh, that it's followed. Executions were slowed in Florida after 2004 when the U.S. Supreme Court decided that they had a method of imposing the death penalty in Florida was unconstitutional. The state made some changes, but Monday, DeSantis signed a new capital punishment bill into law, which reverses many of those changes. And that means it will almost certainly wind up back in the U.S. Supreme Court. Now, your Viper First Look Weather, sponsored by Perry and